When we hear that humans are outnumbered by walkers by a staggering 5,000 to 1 ratio, it makes you think, is normal life realistically a possibility for those still living? However, the walkers are dead, and as such are decomposing. Being that The Walking Dead is set in Georgia, a human body should decompose within under two weeks, as Georgia has an extremely hot and humid environment. Taking into account that the show has gone on as long as it has, it seems strange that walkers are still even around. A theory may be that the virus that they are infected with somehow halts the decomposition period, but nonetheless they are slowly decomposing. If you compare a walker from season 1 to season 6, we can clearly see this. Similarly, when we take a look at the intro sequences of The Walking Dead from season 1 to 6, we see that the letters are slowly appearing to decompose themselves. This may mean that as long as the living can remain alive, they may actually have a chance at normal life. Throughout the six seasons of The Walking Dead, Rick along with his group of survivors have traveled a lot. Despite all that moving around from place to place, the show really hasn't strayed all that far from its origins, where Rick first woke up. In fact, this map showcases many of the key moments throughout the show. As can be seen, the destinations on the map are all within a fairly short traveling distance. For instance, the prison is only about one mile from Herschel's farm. Alexandria and Woodbury are right across from each other, and all these locations are all just about an hour away from Atlanta, where much of the earlier episodes took place. The death of Herschel was sudden and shocked many fans in the fourth season episode Too Far Gone. What many may not know is that Herschel was never meant to make it to the fourth season to begin with. Showrunner Glenn Massara had planned on killing off Herschel by the end of the second season, so what changed? When the initial showrunner Frank Darabont was let go, it took many by surprise. He had done a lot for the show, and much of the cast was actually put together by him. One example is Dale, who was played by Jeffrey DeMunn. DeMunn and Darabont had been longtime friends, and when Darabont was let go, DeMunn did not take kindly to the whole ordeal. He later requested to be written off of the show as an act of support to his friend. When Masara became the replacement showrunner, he was faced with a problem. The Mun wanted to be killed off, but he had already planned on killing off Herschel. As a result, he decided to keep Herschel and give many of the scenes that were initially written for Dale to Herschel. For instance, the scene in the prison where Herschel is seen losing his leg was actually originally written in for Dale. In the very first episode of season 1, we see Rick go into Atlanta, where he is swarmed by a herd of walkers, eventually finding himself inside of an abandoned tank. The dead soldier he finds inside that tank is actor Sam Whitworth. Whitworth has come out saying that the initial showrunner, Frank Darabont, had made plans for the show to make a flashback in season 2, back to that very soldier. Uh, he's like, look, you know, I think it'd be really cool to tell a prequel story about how Atlanta fell, do Black Hawk Down, go through zombies, and, and have a few of the main characters pass through, but it's like a Twilight Zone episode, it'll, the lead will be you, and your character will go through, and you're a soldier, and all these horrible things happen, and, and the chain of command breaks down, and, and, and eventually you have to take out your superior officer to save a bunch of people, and then eventually in the end, you get bit. And then you, you're crawling, and he's pitching me this, and then you're crawling, blah, blah, and you, you crawl into a tank, and you have this grenade, and you're going to blow yourself up, and then you're like, you know what, and you set the grenade next to you, and then you die. And then we reprise the scene from the pilot, where Rick cr crawls in the tank, and there's a zombie there, 
And if you look closely, I played that zombie because we were setting up this prequel that we were going to do. So if you watch the pilot of Walking Dead, that's me in the tank as the zombie who goes and Rick blasts him. And then he gets that grenade which saves them at the end of the season. While sounding like an incredible idea, unfortunately, this is likely an episode that fans of the show will never see. Carol is one of the most developed characters in the span of the show. She has grown from a shy, abused woman into, well, into this. Interestingly, in the initial TV script for the third season, Carol was actually meant to die. You may remember that someone else died instead. The script was rewritten to keep Carol alive and instead kill off T-Dog, when compared to the comics, things were even more different. Carol remained a shy and timid woman, eventually committing suicide, and her daughter actually outlived her. A key part of the show, obviously, has to be the walkers. The realistic looking zombies are crucial to the show and have played a large role in garnering the attention that the show has today. To achieve the most realistic looking zombies possible, it requires amazing makeup artists. Insert Greg Nicotero. In an interview with CNN, Nicotero revealed some secrets about his work on the show. Each character usually takes about an hour and a half to do. It is understandable that this would require far too much time and would be quite impossible to do with the often extremely large herds that we have seen. He revealed that in order to deal with this, the groups are broken up into three categories. Hero makeup, which sees characters getting the full-on makeover. Mid-ground makeup where they are given essentially a paint job to give the appearance of looking dead without any major details. And lastly, there is deep background makeup. These characters will often just have a costume and little makeup or even masks, being that they are farther away from cameras. The show that we've all come to know and love today could have been a very different show had it been taken on by one of the various networks the show was initially pitched to. NBC, for instance, didn't want any zombies within the show at all. Clearly, that wouldn't have worked, so they did make a compromise. The show could have zombies, but the premise of the show had to change drastically. Think Walking Dead meets CSI. Basically, they wanted every episode to showcase the crew solving a zombie crime of the week. Now, when that didn't work, The Walking Dead was almost taken on by HBO. However, HBO eventually turned the show down as they felt it was too violent. Eventually, though, Walking Dead landed a home with AMC, and the show has since been an incredible success. The very first season had an average of just over 5 million viewers per episode. That has grown extensively every season leading up to the impressive premiere of season 5, which saw a record-breaking 17 million viewers tuning in. While the show did take a slight dip in ratings in season 6, when for the first time ever the premiere didn't surpass the previous season's premiere, The Walking Dead has still remained the highest rating show in AMC history. Throughout the first six seasons of the show, we've all seen our fair share of walking corpses, zombies. However, you may have noticed that within the show, they are actually never referred to as zombies. We've heard walkers, herd, lame brains, biters, rotters, lurkers, roamers, and geeks, but never zombies. This hasn't been an accident. Creator Robert Kirkman made the very conscious decision to do so when he began his comic book series. He didn't want to refer to them as zombies as a way to showcase that the state of the world was something completely new to the people experiencing it. 
As such, because these people had never heard of zombies, they naturally came up with their own names for these flesh-eating monsters. It makes sense that a show taking place during a zombie apocalypse can often make for a dangerous film set to work on. As such, many actors on the show actually have stunt doubles, including Chandler Riggs. When Riggs played a younger Carl, he actually shared a stunt double with Madison Lintz, also known as Sophia on the show. That stunt double is Savannah Jade Weehan, who also played the governor's daughter, Penny. However, as we've watched Carl slowly grow up during the show, his body and appearance have matured. As a result, his body double had to be replaced, and that new body double is now played by a 29-year-old stunt woman by the name of Emily Brubst. What many may not know is that the show is actually filmed in a real town. This is the town of Sonoa, Georgia. Since the third season of The Walking Dead, it has become home to the show's town of Woodbury. While many fans of the show would likely love nothing more than to have their favorite show being filmed in their own backyards, the residents of Sonoa don't have it all that easy. When shooting begins with every new coming season, the town is said to become heavily policed with law enforcement making sure that no one tampers with props on set, but also to make sure that local residents don't get in the way of filming. Set times are made for when people are and are not allowed to exit their own homes in order to work around crews. Residents have complained about issues of bright lighting, loud noises, and even explosions in the middle of the night. While for some, the filming has become quite an annoyance, the show does pay up to $400 a month to the residents for any trouble they may experience. The show has also turned the town into somewhat of a tourist hub. 